Assalamu alaikum and very good day. My name is Dr. Javed Iqbal. Welcome to my new video on overview of feature selection and dimensionality reduction methods in machine learning. In my earlier video on standard machine learning pipeline, I have shown you various steps that are involved while we implement machine learning to solve any kind of problem. Feature selection and dimensionality reduction is an important step in the standard machine learning pipeline. This video provides you an overview of different feature selection and dimensionality reduction techniques in machine learning. This slide shows the difference between feature selection and dimensionality reduction. Most of the ML practitioners may deal feature selection and dimensionality reduction as the same thing. Feature selection is also known as feature subset selection. It selects a subset of features from original features based on some predefined criteria. Feature selection is simply selecting and excluding given features without changing them. Next is dimensionality reduction. Dimensionality reduction is done using feature transformation. It transforms high dimensional feature space into a low dimensional feature space. New features are combination of original features. So you have seen that there is a major difference between feature selection and dimensionality reduction. In feature selection, we actually select a subset of features based on some predefined criteria. While in dimensionality reduction, we transform feature from high dimensional space into low dimensional space. And then from those low dimensional space features, we may select top few features. Both are used for reducing the number of features in a data set. This slide shows feature selection in a bit more detail. Given a set of n features, the goal of feature selection is to select a subset of d features where d is less than n in order to minimize the classification error. In the diagram, here you can see that original data has n feature. After applying feature selection technique, we may get m feature. Here m is less than n. The figure on the right shows the working of dimensionality reduction. Suppose in original data we have n features and after applying dimensionality reduction technique, we may also get m number of features. Here these m number of features are different from the original features. These features are derived from original feature using some function f. Feature selection mostly remove features having missing values with low variance and high correlated features. Throughout this session, I will use terms feature, variable, attribute, predictor interchangeably. This slide shows various feature selection methods that can be used for effective feature selection. In my slides, I have added a lot of text. The purpose here is to show a lot of things on the same slide and the things that can be compared with each other. The first feature selection method is the missing value ratio. It removes those features which have high ratio of missing values. A predefined threshold may be defined in case of low missing values, the values may be filled. So in missing value ratio, we may have to remove those features which have a high number of missing values. The second feature selection method is low variance filter. Features in a data set where all the observations have the same value, say 1. Such features have zero variance and may not be significant. We may observe this in our data set that sometime one particular feature may have same value on all the observations. So in that case, that feature may not be very effective since the variance of those values is close to zero. The next method is high correlation filter. Here, high correlation between two features means they have similar trends and likely to carry similar information. If the correlation coefficient crosses a certain threshold, 
value we can draw one of the feature next method is random forest random forest can also be used uh, for feature selection in the tree building it is possible to compute how much each feature decrease the impurity impurity is a measure of the homogeneity of labels at the node the more a feature decrease impurity more important the feature is so while working on decision tree we may have find that the more a feature decreases impurity more important the feature is the impurity decrease from each feature can be averaged across trees to determine the final importance of a variable generally the features at the top of the constructor tree are more important than features that are selected at the end node of the trees the next method is backward feature elimination we start with n features of the data set and train the model next compute the performance of the model now compute the performance after eliminating each feature this process repeats n time then we identify the features whose removal has produced a small or no change in the performance of the model and then drop that feature the model continues until we get a smaller subset of features the next feature selection method is the forward features elimination it start with a single feature train the model n number of times using each feature separately the feature giving best performance is selected as the starting feature then repeat this process and add one feature at a time the feature that produces the highest increase in the performance is retained we repeat this process until no significant improvement is seen in the model performance the next slide shows different type of dimensionality reduction methods the first one is the factor analysis in factor analysis features are grouped by their correlations that is all feature in a particular group will have a high correlation among themselves but a low correlation with features of other groups each group is a factor these factors are small in number as compared to the original dimension of data the next important dimensionality reduction method is principal component analysis pca PCA is an orthogonal linear transformation that transforms data to a new coordinate system such that the greatest variance by any projection of the data comes to lie on the first coordinate first principal component the second greatest variance lies on the second coordinate second principal component and so on size of principal components is same as the number of features in the data finally top rank principal components were selected for representation of original data the next dimensionality reduction method is tsni t distributed stochastic neighbor embedding tsni is a good method to visualize high dimensional data it converts similarities between data points to joint probabilities and tries to minimize the pull back labeler divergence between the joint probabilities of low dimensional embedding and high dimensional data pull back labeler divergence measures the difference between two probability distribution over same variable next dimensionality reduction method is you map uniform manifold approximation and projection a non linear dimensionality reduction method it is very effective for visualizing clusters or group of data points and their relative proximities it is used for visualization of high dimensional data into low dimensional similarly to tsni so tsni and you map can be used alternatively in some cases tsni perform well while in other cases umap may perform well 
PCA is also an important method. It can be used for dimensionality reduction in various applications. This slide shows few other dimensionality reduction methods. The next is the isomap, isometric mapping. Isomap is a nonlinear dimensionality reduction method based on the spectral theory which tries to preserve the geodesic distance in the lower dimension. After that, it uses graph distance to approximate geodesic distance between all pairs of points. Next is the ICA, independent component analysis. ICA is a linear dimension reduction method which transforms the data set into columns of independent components. Next is the Fourier transform or Wavelet transform. Fourier transform are effective for dimensionality reduction of time series or signals or image related data. It works by reconstructing original signal as a weighted sum of sinusoids. It converts spatial domain signals into frequency domain signals. There are also few other methods that can be used for dimensionality reduction. Few of these are LDA, linear discriminant analysis, information gain, chi-square test, ANOVA, heat maps, MDS, multi-dimensional scaling, and feature ranking. This slide shows the key advantages of feature selection and dimensionality reduction. Although there are other plenty of benefits, but I have highlighted few here. Feature selection and dimensionality reduction are powerful tools for machine learning practitioners to visualize and understand large and high dimensional data sets. These techniques prevent overfitting the model. Techniques are also useful for reducing the computational complexity of any model. Using these techniques, we can ensure simplicity of the learning models. Lastly, in this video, I tried my best to provide you an overview of feature selection and dimensionality reduction techniques. As we have seen that there is a clear difference between feature selection and dimensionality reduction. In feature selection, we select a subset of original features, while in dimensionality reduction, we transform our original features from one space to another space. The features obtained in dimensionality reduction may be a transformation of the original features. Next, I show you a different type of feature selection and dimensionality reduction techniques. The discussed techniques can be very useful in order to reduce the dimensions of the original data. In this session, I provide you an overview of uh, most popular feature selection and dimensionality reduction techniques. In my next videos, I will provide you detail of each of the feature selection and dimensionality reduction method. I hope this video would be very useful in order to understand feature selection and dimensionality reductions. Using these techniques, we may reduce uh, the original dimensions of the data. These techniques can be very effective for data which has huge number of feature dimensions. I hope this video would be very useful for master and PhD students, those who are working in machine learning area. Thank you very much for watching this video. Stay tuned for my next videos.